Hello and welcome to this lecture in the course on introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varsha Apte, I am a faculty member in the department of computer science and engineering IIT Bombay. So, um, in the previous uh, lectures we were looking at uh, closed systems um, and just like we did for open queuing systems, uh, we are going to go through a real measurement study of a uh, web server. So, uh, this, this is uh, again a recap for you to just look at all the formulae of the closed systems that we studied. Uh, we have studied low load asymptote for when number of users uh, or clients is uh, going towards 1, uh, then when the number of clients goes towards infinity and then for in between the asymptotes, uh, these are all the uh, formulae. Just a reminder that the in the, in the case of non-asymptotic metrics, um, we, uh, we do not know yet how to calculate each of these independently, these are all interrelated. So, for example, throughput is in terms of R and uh, number at server is also in terms of R and response time is in terms of throughput. So, look at these, Okay, these are interrelated, we do not really know how to calculate them independently, we are going to learn that later, uh, but today this is all we know. Uh, so, uh, again like the recall the earlier lecture we, where we had done this measurement case study of a web server, the setup is uh, identical in terms of what is going on at the server. There is a web server which has multiple processes or multiple threads in one process. It runs a CPU bound script um, and uh, there is a, a client uh, server where uh, basically multiple threads of this uh, load generator software uh, generates requests. Uh, now, the difference is earlier requests were just generated at a given rate in the open system when we were having open arrivals, uh, requests were getting generated at a given rate. Okay. So, this is no longer the case, now we are looking uh, studying closed systems. So, these threads behave like users who are in the uh, think and, uh, and issue request loop, okay. the, the loop that we talked about in closed systems where the users are going to think for some time and then issue a request. Right? So, uh, this is exactly what this the clients here are going to do, they are going to issue a request, get a response and then think. Okay, and then issue the request. Okay, so, now there is this think type. So, the way we give uh, specification to, to the load generator is we give this number of users, we denote by m as usual and the think time h and that, that is used as input by the load generator and it uh, each of these threads is doing this request response loop. Okay. Um, yeah. So, the execution time of the script just like we uh, saw in the previous uh, open experiment is approximately 50 milliseconds. There is one core and one thread at the web server okay, just to keep things simple and this is the, uh, the uh, experiment is happening on the LAN. So, we, uh, we do not have to bother about or worry about network delays. Okay. So, uh, this is just a table for your reference for all the measured values. We may look at this table every now and then. But uh, this is mainly for you to see after the lecture what the values are uh, of the experiment. Um, okay. So, as we had done again before, uh, we will start with trying to figure out based on what we know about the system, can we draw the throughput graph with respect to varying load, uh, here it is going to be uh, with respect to m. Okay. Uh, can we draw the graph ourselves? What can we draw? Uh, what can we say about the graph given what we know about the system? So, remember we know that the tau, the execution time is 50 milliseconds, that means the mu is going to be 20 requests per second. This is going to be the maximum uh, capacity, throughput capacity of the system. And also remember that we have studied the Klein Rock saturation heuristic, okay, which is 1 plus think time divided by uh, service time, and that turns out to be 41. So, using this two things uh, we should be able to uh, draw something about the graph. So, let us try okay. here this is throughput, this is m. So, one thing is that uh, since I know that the saturation is going to happen around 41, 
so I should uh, not draw the graph that much beyond 41 right. So, let us say we just draw till around 100. So, this is 50 and this is requests per second we know the maximum here is going to be 20 ok. Um, so, this is 10, 5, 15 ok. So, somewhere here this is 25, 12, 6, somewhere here is 1 ok. So, one thing we know that uh, around here is where is M star 41, somewhere here uh, the throughput is going to start going towards uh, the maximum not exactly here, but we can be sure that around here the throughput is going to be for 20 requests per second. We also know actually the throughput when the uh, the low load asymptote right remember we know this 1 over h plus tau. So, what is 1 over h plus tau here? It is 1 over um, h is 2 plus 0 0.05 ok. So, 1 over 2.05. So, it is uh, almost around 1 over 2. So, 0 0.5 right. So, here we can say that the value at 1 is going to be around 0 0.5 requests per second ok. 1 over 2.05 is almost going to be equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so, we know the value at 1, we know the maximum value and in the middle we, we do not really know remember that the middle values need this r and we do not really know that. So, uh, you know we, uh, we can guess initially that it is going to remain low. So, we can, we can guess that uh, when m is equal to 2 this is going to be 1 and so on, but uh, otherwise we just sort of heuristically connect this graph like this and this is what we expect that it is going to be ok. So, let us see now the actual graph ok. Uh, it, uh, the maximum here, uh, the maximum here is very close to this is 20, it is very close to what we predicted theoretically. Um, rest of it uh, as I said we do not really have a handle on it. At 20 we are getting around 9 requests per second ok. Uh, if we take the remember the value here m divided by h plus r let us put this for 20 and see what happens. So, uh, for m equal to 20 we have 20 divided by h is 2 and uh, r we do not know, but uh, r we can maybe guess that it is going to be uh, around not that much more than 0, what if it was 0 0.05 ok, what, what if it was 0 0.05 we would get 20 divided by 2.05 uh, which is around 10. So, uh, if the response time remained so low, if the response time remained uh, close to, if the response time remained close to tau, then actually we expect that the throughput at 20, uh, when there are 20 users in the system would be 10 requests per second, right. Uh, that, that would be our expectation which is what this calculation is showing. Uh, and it is very interesting to see that it is around it is close to 10. So, even if we did a calculation assuming that r is close to tau, tau here is 0 0.05 in seconds, uh, we, we get a close enough prediction to the actual value. If we expect that it would not be 10 it will be something less because r will actually be greater than tau ok, it would not remain 50 milliseconds uh, and therefore, this will actually be uh, less than 10 and we get around 9. Okay, so, it is nice to see and you should try to do these calculations and predict actually this graph not only at 1 and at infinity, uh, but even at the middle points it does it does uh, make sense. So, now let us go to uh, utilization, similar things can be done for utilization, let us draw the graph. Now, 
now this is rho it's going to be between 0 and 1. Again let us just draw it for m till 100 this is 50, 25 somewhere here is m star 41 okay. Um, at somewhere around these points we know that utilization is going to be 1. In fact, the, the nature of the utilization graph will be very similar to the uh, throughput. So, at, uh, at m equal to 1 we can actually calculate utilization right. What is the m equal to 1 utilization? We can look at this right utilization is going to be tau divided by h plus tau. Basically, one user issues a request every h plus tau time and in that time uh, out of that time tau amount of time the CPU is busy. So, that is going to be the utilization. So, uh, rho at 1 is basically 0 0.05 divided by 2 plus 0 0.05. Um, this is basically 0 0.05 divided by 2.05. Uh, which is going to be very close to 0 0.05 divided by 2. So, let us just do that calculation. Um, this is 0 0.025 close to that right. So, that is our estimate here for m equal to 1 0 0.025. In reality, it might be turning out to be almost 0 ok. So, yeah. So, we start from there and again in the middle we have some uh, values again they depend on r ok just because throughput depends on r utilization also has r in it. So, we cannot really calculate it exactly, but let us look at what the actual graph was and let us see whether uh, the graph made sense ok. Again uh, it is pretty perfect and we can see by the way both in the throughput and the utilization chart this part. at around 41 is where uh, you re, you do start approaching the high values of utilization and then it starts approaching uh, saturation. Uh, and if you recall how Kleinrock heuristic is derived, it is actually trying to predict exactly this point. It is not trying to predict the, the full saturation point, it is trying to predict the approaching of saturation right. So, it is it is not bad, it is uh, our prediction of 41 uh, was pretty good. Um, now, let us do the same kind of uh, reasoning for 20 uh, users ok. Uh, now, we actually know the throughput right. So, at 20 we know that uh, the throughput was around 9 ok. So, if we know the throughput uh, can we calculate the utilization directly using utilization law. So, suppose it is uh, 9 requests per second. So, uh, at at uh, rho at 20 is equal to lambda at 20 multiplied by tau throughput at 20 right which was 9 multiplied by 0 0.05 this is 0 0.45 approximately. Let us see what we get here at 20 right. So, very close ok this is 0.5. So, uh, a little less than 0 0.5 is 0.45. This is exactly what one would expect just by utilization law. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, do the same calculation at other numbers. Uh, so, this value here should be equal to throughput at 30 multiplied by 0 0.05 and uh, I would encourage you to do the calculation and see whether you get some number that verifies this number. Okay. But uh, clearly even utilization graph matches our predictions well. Uh, we can do at 10 it because it is some nice number 0.25 let us see what happens at 10. At 10 uh, throughput of was 5 requests per second right this is 5 ok. This is the point we are looking at. So, throughput was 5 requests per second. Um, so, let us do the calculation here um, this should be throughput at 10 multiplied by 0 0.05, this was 5 multiplied by 0 0.05 which should be 0 0.25 and lo and behold that is exactly what we get ok. 
So, uh, it is matching very well the, the utilization law is, is a very very powerful law it will apply uh, very uh, if it does not apply that should be an indication to you that something is very uh, different in the system again either there is a measurement error or you are not modeling something about the system. Okay? So, these kind of sanity checks to see whether whatever I have learnt as laws in my theory are they applying when I do this measurement this helps in either confirming whatever you expect or pointing out that something is different or wrong about your experiment and it is not matching the theory. Okay. Now, let us look at response time. Okay. Uh, remember at response time at 1 should just be equal to tau. So, this is 0 0.05 or 50 milliseconds. Um, and response time asymptote we had done this in our closed systems it is remember m uh, actually is m tau minus h right this is at any value of m and the asymptote is m tau minus h. So, what is it going to be here that asymptote will be uh, so r uh, m will be m multiplied by 0 0.05 minus 2 for large m and especially for m less greater than let us say 50 also. We know what is large for this system right anything after saturation is large. So, 41 is where uh, remember m star is 41, 41 is where the knee of the curves are, 41 is where saturation is approaching. So, beyond 41 we have seen here at around 50 or 60 uh, and onwards uh, system is definitely getting saturated is going to 1. So, we can say either 50 or 60 is after which this particular formula for re response time should apply. So, we can draw the graph accordingly right. So, let us do that. This is R, this is M again I am just going to draw 100, 50, this 75. 25, 12, somewhere around 1, we know that this should be, uh, if we are doing this in milliseconds, then it will be some 50 milliseconds. And let us plug this in for at 60 uh, and see what happens. So, if it is in milliseconds, then R60 is going to be 60 multiplied by 50 milliseconds minus 2000. So, this is actually 3000 minus 2000, so 1000 milliseconds. So, uh, on 60, let us say this is 1000 and that is what this value is going to be. But what is going to be the shape? Remember that response time is not going to flatten, it is going to have the, uh, a shape like this where this part is linear and the slope is going to be tau right since we have so which is 50 milliseconds the slope should be 50 milliseconds because r at this point is equal to m tau minus h tau is the slope. Okay. So, we have made you know our theoretical graph let us see how it matches with the actual measurement. Okay. So, uh, let us check at 60. So, this happens to be in seconds, this is seconds. Remember we had done uh, R60 is 1000 milliseconds which is equal to 1 second. So, let us check here at 60 it is actually exactly 1 second okay. and again uh, at 41 is where the knee is happening. Remember the Klein rock saturation heuristic was made by doing this. Uh, meeting point of the low load asymptote and the high load asymptote 
and this is exactly uh, what is matching here and the saturation uh, heuristic really turned out to be perfect for this. Uh, we can actually also uh, do the same calculation for m equal to 100. This is just showing this graph on a larger scale here and in seconds. So, let us do this for m equal to 100. So, r 100 is equal to 100 multiplied by 50 minus 2000 in milliseconds. So, this is 5000 minus 2000. So, this is 3000 milliseconds. So, let us see what it is here. So, yes, right. So, this is where we are finding. So, exactly 3 seconds is what we are getting the measured value, okay. So, uh, so really the theory that we learned for closed systems seems to be matching our uh, measurement quite well. Um, and uh, so, uh, again if it did not match, we will have experiments where it does not match and that should make you just think as to what is different about your system. It may not be wrong, it is just that it may not be as simple as the kind of closed system that we are modeling in theory. Uh, but it will help you find the differences. Okay. This is an interesting graph which is showing response time versus throughput. Uh, so, uh, it is it's, we do something like response time versus request per second when we do uh, when we did uh, graphs for open systems. But in that case the arrival rate kept increasing. Here what happens is beyond a certain point the throughput is not going to increase the throughput flattens out at 20. So, it we see that response time is like a like a impulse function where at the same value of throughput it just keeps increasing. Okay. So, this is a very interesting graph to see. Okay. So, there is a sharp rise because uh, you are never going to get a value of throughput higher than 20 because that is just the maximum capacity of the system whereas response time keeps increasing. So, it is sort of like having many multiple values going on increasing for the same uh, x value. Uh, utilization versus throughput actually uh, because now by uh, utilization law this should be a proper line. Okay. Remember that uh, when you look at utilization versus number of users, this is not a graph that is supposed to be actually linear. This part the slope is not expected to be tau. The slope is expected to be tau only when you plot it against throughput. Okay. So, that is what this is doing. This will actually be tau. Okay, because rho is equal to throughput multiplied by tau and uh, you can check this yourself okay, whether you are getting. So, for 10 value 10 you can of course see 10 multiplied by 0 0.05 is equal to 0 0.5 and that is what you get here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is clearly just a uh, straightforward application of uh, utilization law uh, and this is what is expected. Uh, we can do one more check actually for the response time versus number of users. Uh, this slope was supposed to be is supposed to be tau. Uh, we can check whether the slope is tau. So, uh, at 100 for example, we had 3 and at 80 we had 2. So, 3 minus 2 divided by 20 or we can say so this is 1 divided by 20 in seconds. So, that is 1000 divided by 20 in milliseconds and this is 50 milliseconds which is exactly our tau. Okay. So, that is also matching. So, uh, one more very interesting thing we can do for closed systems uh, which is uh, a, a sort of a think time verification. Okay. So, by Little's law we should have for any load level this formula. right? Again m is equal to r cis plus h which is think time multiplied by throughput. If we rearrange this we can have the think time on the left hand side and this formula on the right hand side m by throughput minus uh, r cis the response time basically. So, if we use uh, this formula and calculate think time for every value of m we should just get 2 seconds. right? Uh, so, this also turns out to be a very good sanity check of your experiments. Okay. Uh, and the next uh, gra uh, table shows that this has been done for each of these uh, values and this is the think time which is 
calculated based on these values by the m divided by lambda minus r formula ok. So, this is the m, this is the throughput and this is the r cis and this is the formula that is being used for calculating this ok. So, these values should all be close to 2 seconds and if you look at them they are fairly close to 2 seconds. Now, why do we do this calculation? Sometimes uh, think time gets inflated. Okay. Uh, you configure 2 seconds, but you are getting like 5 seconds, 6 seconds uh, and sometimes this really means that uh, there is some other time in the system that you are not accounting for. Sometimes it means that the client is bottlenecking and when this check fails, this is a big indication that something is wrong with your experiment and you need to uh, make sure whether your model uh, is correct, your experiment is correct and so on. Okay. So, this is a very uh, again another case study of how you could use um, uh, queuing systems formulae and compare them with what you are getting in measurements. And in this particular uh, study that we did, um, this experiment the match was actually very good and uh, often when in closed systems uh, in some systems you can get a very good match ok. Ok, uh, we are done with like closed uh, queuing systems with just one node just like we did open queuing networks and there were multiple nodes and where requests flow through various nodes we are going to next do closed queuing networks which is also the last topic of this course. Thank you.